Ooh, look, a sprayer in September. Who would have thought around here? Just spraying our double crop beans and we are done for the year spraying. Well, hey, well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hearts and Family Farms. I got a treat for you guys. I am gonna show you what system made us thousands of dollars this year. Step inside my humble abode that you won't be able to see anything. Alrighty, well you can see me. I am inside one of our grain bins. Do you guys know what our grain bin is for? It is to hold grain. This bin right here is about 35,000, and I wish I would have done this filming uh, in the daylight more, but we're gonna make it work. So hey, I'm gonna be talking about our AGI system, and what this is, this AGI Shared Track, gives me and my family peace of mind with our grain bin. So, to give a little bit of math for you guys, this grain bin holds 35,000 bushels, somewhere around there, 35, 38, we'll go 35 for easier math. 35,000 bushels times $5 corn, I'll let you guys think about it a little bit. Okay, that's enough think thinking. This bin will hold $175,000 worth of grain on an average year. That's, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of investment. So what we do to choose to protect our investment are these th cables right here. These are the bread and butter. They go inside of our grain bin and give us a cross-sectional view. And that basically just gives us a peace of mind because when these grain bins are filled, there's no way of knowing what's actually going on. You could have heat, you could have mold, you could have bugs, you could be spoiling. That's a lot of money to be out there just to leaving it to chance. So we're gonna flip back to when we were unloading this bin. I had a pretty good breakdown of how we are saving money on this corn bin. These are our AGI shirt track cables. Link will be down in the description, but these are the cables that tell us what our bin is like for moisture and temperature all throughout our bin. We got four cables in this size of bin. They're pretty sweet. We've liked them so far. We'll go ahead and talk about them right now. Jump the future on. So here's the AGI app that I've been uh, telling you guys about. I'm going to kind of scroll through. So we have six bins hooked up. We have our Goose Lake bin, which has green, which has soybeans in it. We have our East bin, our Middle bin, which is the one I was just, I'm in right now, which is empty. Our West bin, our Wet bin, and our Jerry's bin. So this has roughly three quarters, two thirds or three quarters of our bins all hooked up. And I'm going to dive a little bit more into our Goose Lake bin. This has soybeans in it. You can kind of see that it's kind of a really new, cool map with different color coding and hot spots. I basically have the, uh, the it set to auto hydrate these soybeans. Scrolling through the different things that it can really kind of show you like temperature, moisture, runtime, all that fun stuff. I have this bin actually set to auto hydrate like I was mentioning before. That basically means I'm going to take these bins, that, these beans that we had roughly nine and a half ish percent in there. And I'm going to try and rehydrate them back to 12.5 percent because that's that's a lot of money. That's three percent times whatever the price of beans are right now, which they keep going up and up and up because we have a drought. So if you look right now with our moisture cables, if you look at the average over the last couple months that we've had the system active, I mean, that's it's like, like I said, we've already gained two percentage points of moisture. It's a lot of money right there. And that's why we like this system. Hey, thanks, Pastor Ron. So as you guys have told, that AGI Share Track system gave us a lot of peace of mind. We didn't have a single kernel of spoiled corn or rotten corn in any of our bins that had that. That's awesome because we can't say the same for the bins that did not have the system. Needless to say, we're going to look at expanding our system. That is for sure. So now we're going to go ahead down to our soybean bin because Yes, these, the bin in corn, at least for how we use them, we, it doesn't really make us too much money. So you, there, you can save money or be save or generate revenue with the sure track system with corn. We mainly choose it. We're not set up for that right now. We mainly choose it to use it for basically give us some peace of mind with our grain, with our grain. But with our soybeans, we made over $2,000 with it this year. Well, let me show you why. That is the last field of beans that we sprayed. Sweet. It's definitely on the shorter side, but if she's blooming, hopefully she yields like 20 bushel. That'd be pretty good for double crops, planted as late as they were. And it sounds like we're gonna be uh, seeding some more wheat this fall. Pretty fun. And here comes Nathan with our 565 premium round baler. Okay, so as I was mentioning before, so with the shirt track system, we have six bins hooked up. And as you can kind of see with our, I had them uh, all kind of connected to the cloud. All of them have kind of modems, cell phone modems that can pump up data as soon as it ha as soon as that happened. That gives us kind of ability to check it in real time. It gives us the ability to control fans, control burners and heat if we wanted to. So it's a pretty neat system. So we have it on five bins that typically have corn in them and one bin that typically has soybeans in them. And the soybean bin this year is what made us money. <clears throat> We'll do some calculations here shortly, but I have the scale tickets that basically 
we put in on average grain that was around nine and a half percent and we sold right at an average of 11.6 percent that's over two percent of moisture that we added back into our soybeans and that is how this system will make money so when we get down there i'm going to explain a little bit more about how it does that and how it is so cool and allows us so much flexibility when it comes to soybean harvest. You can really tell where the rock points are when in the soybean fields right now, that's for sure. And here it is. This is our goose-like bin. As you can kind of see, there's soybeans around it this year. This bin holds roughly 10,000 bushels of soybeans, 10 to 12,000. I think we'll, I will call it 10,000 just for easy math this year. So 10,000 soybeans have been, and we put in on average 9% of soybeans in this bin. And this guy right here, or nine and a half. Yeah, nine and a half, sorry, nine and a half percent soybeans. And this guy right here rehydrated the beans back up to 11.6, right around there. That's awesome. What rehydration means is basically pumping moisture back into the soybeans. For all grain have a moisture content. Basically what percentage of the grain is water, what percentage is the good stuff. So for each crop, there's a certain parameter of what the processors will accept and when they will start docking you. So for soybeans, for example, our processor will start docking you at 13% moisture and above. If you bring in 13.5 that is too much, you are selling them way too much water and they will dock you but anything below 13%, they don't give you a premium. So if you give them 5% soybeans or 13% soybeans, they're gonna pay you the same amount, even though 13 minus five, that's 8% that you are losing because you, that is 8% less water that you are hauling them. So like I said, they don't give you a premium for that. So it is imperative to get as close to that dockage as possible, because like I said, that is how you're the most profitable. So last year, we had a harvest that was pretty dry. You know, the soybean harvest got away from us. We were harvesting some beans towards the end at 8%. You know, we had some beans in here that were 10, 11%, and we had a lot of beans in here that were 8%. So because of that, the bin averaged right around that nine, nine and a half. Well, because I knew that, I knew I wanted to put those, bins, those beans in here because this system uses this computer right here. It has sensors that tell us up on top of the bin, and right here in the plenum of the fan, it tells us what the, you know, the dew point, all the weather stats that it needs to have. It has a fan controller on here, so that way it's looking at that, okay, and that way it says, hey, I know the grain's 9%, I know outside is 15% moisture, let's pump air in, so that way it basically pumps that wet air in and starts rehydrating the beans. That's how it works, it is as simple as that. So for my end, I basically say, hey, I wanna rehydrate my beans, I wanna get them to 12.5%, Go. And that's what AGI Search Track does. So that's what is really, really cool about it. So you can kind of see, here is the bin. Got three cables in there. And those three cables are basically the brains that basically, that give us that cross-sectional view and that cross-sectional look into what our beans are at. Given a couple months, and this doesn't happen overnight, you know, it does take quite a bit of time, you know, let's say a month to three months is what it took ours to rehydrate those beans. But given the amount of time, you can save a lot of money. I would be willing to bet that we didn't spend more than 50 bucks in electricity, but hauling 2% more of your soybean load, so 10,000 times 2%, that's 200 bushels of soybeans and we sold them for 15 bucks 200 bushels times 15 bucks that's three thousand dollars three thousand dollars guys that's that's a lot of money that will easily pay for that system and that's just on one bin that this happened so like i said we are very happy with this system you really can't wait to see it to use it again drop a comment down below guys if you have any questions whatsoever but like i said let's go ahead and uh jump over to the user interface side of things because like i said guys this this bin you can actually see over time it gives you the data on okay when the, how much how long the system was running you know the fans were running each day how much you know you can see that moisture rise up over time it's pretty cool because like i said we already we're gonna have another uneven bean harvest i can already tell because look we have some beans already dying these beans are going to be bone dry by the time the rest of the field is good so it's it's gonna be another uneven harvest and AGI SureTrack gives me peace of mind. So thank you for AGI for helping to partner with us. Like I said, I'm really, really, really excited to see him.
And yeah, let's go ahead and jump to future on. We can start kind of talk through a little bit more of the computer interface. But before we do that, let's walk out and take a look at some of these beans. You can definitely tell the, like I said before, the, uh, the rock points, the points without moisture, because they're already starting to lose their color. Kind of see some of these top pods were aborted because they didn't have moisture. That was going to be a soybean pod, but it aborted. A lot of two beans, three bean pods, not a lot of fours. And you can kind of see this is what happens when the soybean plant matures. It just starts to lose its leaves. The pods are starting to yellow. That means it's the, the soybean plant is starting to is reached its senescence and is starting to die off. But you go another 10 yards, get into a lot greener stuff, and the plant's pretty well alive. So it's gonna be a little uneven. We have not had much moisture here for, oh gosh. I don't think we've had any moisture since I've been home from Denmark, which is not good because I've been gone from Denmark for three weeks, four weeks, and I've been home for about a week and we haven't had any rain. Let, very marginal rain, less than half an inch, which in August, your rains in August is what makes soybeans. So it's, it's not good by any means. I guess it is what it is. I mean, the, the vegetative side of things is pretty good. I mean, these beans are decently tall. They're above my knee, which isn't bad for not having to walk, for not walking out in them. But it's just, the pods aren't there. Pod counts aren't there. So, I mean, we're, we're going to be behind this year. We're going to be short, probably 15% off average is what I was going to guess. Like I said, it's just a guess at this point because nobody really knows. I don't care how much you scout, how much you're out there looking. Nobody really knows until you run a combine across it. So it is, it is what it is, but here's a kind of a cool thing. See how uh, right here, see those little two tracks? That's where our sprayer actually ran through. And notice how, yes, we did run over some, but you see how the soybeans kind of canopied back over that? So even though, yes, we did kill some beans, with beans especially, it really doesn't hurt you that much because the, the beans you had right here that were killed off, the beans around it will kind of take over that gapped sunlight. So that way you don't have any, uh, you're not really losing a whole lot more because beans out here, the whole goal is to get them canopied and fighting for that sun power and that chokes out the weeds because you want to have your entire, uh, your entire field covered in soybeans so that way you can absorb as much sun and photosynthetic energy as possible. So soybeans is a pretty cool plant. They're hardy. They grow pods all the way down to the bottom. That's why we have to have a flex head that can cut within three inches of the ground. Like this one right here. This pod is an inch off the ground, maybe two inches. So you got to be able to have a header that can follow the contours of the ground and capture as many beans as possible. But the bigger reason why we run soybeans is because we uh, it, it's a good crop rotation compared to our corn. Corn is our money maker. We can really grow the crap out of corn. Soybeans, we haven't really figured out how to push the envelope like we have with our corn crop. But soybeans, the big reason is you can spray a different type of chemical that kills corn, but also it's a different type of chemistry that is different against the weed. So with corn chemicals and beans chemicals, they're completely different chem groups. So it's just like if you had the same food for you know two weeks i don't care if it's your favorite food if you have it for two weeks in a row every single meal you're eventually going to get used to it you're going to get sick of it and that's just like if we were going to plant corn after corn after corn after corn the weeds will get resistant to that chemistry so that's why we have beans that we switch it up so anyway let's go ahead and go to future on and we can talk about the computer user interface and we can close it out then Alrighty guys, so I'm going to talk to you about the computer computer interface. But actually, my my personal favorite. I'm going to do it, be doing it on the app, and I apologize if my dog is in the background. She's being a menace. So as you can see, I am uh, I have the Goose Lake bin pulled up right now. You can choose customized data ranges, date ranges, and stuff like that. But I'm going to be choosing when we were hydrating our beans. We were hydrating our beans roughly from April 1st to July 31st, roughly like that. So as you can kind of see, I'm seeing daily averages. I'm only going to look at the centers in the grain. And you can kind of see where I'm running on auto hydrate and 12%. Here's our temperature ranges. You know, obviously in early April, temperature's a lot colder. We are going to be right around that, you know, 40 to 50 degrees. But obviously as the summer warms up, it's just kind of nice to show you that. And if we were going to see moldy beans, or not beans, moldy moldy grain or anything like that, temperature would be a real, real good telltale sign of that, like temperature spikes. But moisture is the biggest thing for the operation for this one. As you can kind of see, we were right around that 9 to 9.5% when we started hydrating. But when we were done hydrating, right on that 11, 11, 11 and a half, somewhere between that 11 and a half to 11 to 
you know, that 11.8, something like that. That's where we ended. So that is a whole 2% at least of moisture to be pumped back into those beans. And as I mentioned before, 2% times $15, that's a lot of money. That's over two grand that we made on this system alone. And the nice thing is it's all on, all on your phone, all at your fingertips. You can be controlling the fan. You can set how you want the bin to be running. You can just be monitor only. You can do monitor plus alerts. You can hydrate. You can cool. You can dry. So many cool things. You can kind of see shows us how long our fan was running at times you know in that early may time frame we actually had one time where it ran for over 24 we ran it it ran the whole day 24 hours so yeah it's just kind of cool you can kind of see a rough inventory as well yeah just just a really neat system that is for sure i really like it and that's like i said just the soybean side of things we can look at all sorts of different uh bins that we got as i'm going back to our storage and we had a fuse blow so i gotta get that fixed in the goose lake bin but you can kind of see where our current bins are at yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat stuff. So, guys, if you're interested, check out the, that AGI shirt track linked down below in the description. Well, let's head back to past Ron and uh, close out this video. Appreciate it, future Ron. Well, so, guys, like I said, drop a comment down below. Do you guys have any questions about this system? I would love to put you guys in touch. Check out the AG, the link down below. AGI is a pretty large company, but they treat you like your next door neighbor. Like I have a great relationship with a couple of our AGI reps, as well as you know any of the technicians that have always come out to the farm. They're very professional, very quick, and I've and I've loved our working relationship that we've had over the last year. So I can't wait to start rolling the combines across the fields, guys. It's literally not going to be long. Like it's going to be within the next month. We are going to be heart starting in September. I guarantee that. Well, I don't want to make too big of guarantees, but it's, it's going to be day. If we don't start in September, I will be shocked. So anyway, can't wait to start filling these bins. Start, Can't wait to keep being smarter every single day and finding out ways to make money on the farm. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are interested, go check out AGI down below. Thank you guys again. Thank you, AGI, for helping sponsor this video. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, take it easy, stay safe, and a ta-ta for now. Yes, the big dairy in our area has already begun chopping, and they have chopped a lot. Phew, they run two big choppers when they need to.